I did not want the last video to be too long, so I cut some of it off because I still am speaking to that special part of people who truly love God, who are really walking in his will. And yet, it's going to take time, time for you to be able to get where you need to be. Now, there's some of you that have suffered terrible, terrible things. It's ter so terrible that I can't even mention them because it would actually make the human part of people sick to even hear it. There's some things that the Bible says that you don't say. The Bible even tells you that that uh, it's a shame to speak of what the evil people do. So there's like a line there. If it makes you feel sick, you know, uh, maybe you needed to hear it, maybe you didn't. I don't know. I'm not your judge. But I am saying to you that because you endured and you suffered so much, and you think, well, I'm older now, and I don't have time to spend a lifetime like you did to learn what you did. Too bad for you, because your timing is not in his hand, in your hands. It's in his hands. You can think, oh, but you took 40 years to get where you're at. Oh, yes, I did. And I didn't have a single helper. I didn't have one person that ever lifted me that I know of. Well, maybe I had one long, long time ago that I could feel their prayers, but they never mentioned Jesus to me. Because God just now brought that to my remembrance. And she's been, she was elderly when I was 20, so she's been long gone. But here's the thing you need to understand. What you endured did not buy you anything. And because you were in an emergency, if God would not have intervened, he would have never come and spoken to you. And because he speaks to you once in a while and you want to develop those gifts, but inside of your heart, you can actually say, I don't have time to mess with this. I don't have time. I only have a little bit of time left because, say, like I'm in my 50s or my 60s or even my 70s, I just have no time. You cannot tell the God who holds time in his hands that you don't have time to work with him, to work out your salvation completely because you are not saved because you suffered. You are not saved because you went through anything. You are not saved because you were so great. You are saved because he is God and merciful. You are saved because God made that decision before you were ever born. Don't you see? He didn't make that decision because of what you were going through. He made that decision because before you were born, he decided now, I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, it's true as I stand here, that many of us, we hinder him. We go through things a lot of times because we do not know. And instead of, instead of us allowing him to speak to us, we plow through. I'm a great one for doing that when I was younger. Oh, did I do that? And it did not help me to race through something. It almost killed me many times. I would have been better off and less hindered if I would have listened to him and let him slow me up. Let him take the time to speak to me. You see, it's not the amount of suffering. It's not what the atrocity is. It is the amount of time that you allow him to teach you. I'm not talking about what man can teach you. I'm not talking about what books can show you. I'm not talking about what any but preacher can sit and talk with you and tell you. I am talking about being in the presence of God. I'm talking about, uh, I mean, I was in the presence of God 
and still am every day, all the time. But I had to learn how to be in the presence of God by being with him for 10 solid years. And I'm telling you, I didn't do anything else but listen. I didn't pray. I didn't tell him how I thought and felt because he knew. I didn't talk to him about so-and-so, and, -so, and uh, I didn't because he knew. All I did was listen. I put myself in his presence all day long and sometimes all night long and nothing else but him. Oh, sometimes I went through the motions of having to clean the house and having to do what I had to do to cook for my husband or whatever. But I was always, always in his presence. Now, if it took me that long to get this much wisdom and understanding, where are you when you want to leap over it? You want to jump over it. You want to take my wisdom and make it your own and do what everybody else does. And you come and take your foot and you put it on my back and you go. And you're going to have stepping stone to wisdom. <laughs> no, you will not. I'll tell you why. Wisdom is gone. And if you step your stone upon my back and upon my head to climb up higher, you got a problem because that's not wisdom. Why wisdom was given out. Wisdom is given out so that you may humble yourself, so that you may be used of God to help people that need it, not to be somebody, not to be seen, not to be known. Poor you, what you went through. Because no matter what the atrocity was, it was nothing compared to what Jesus went through to save you. So you can go forever and talk to God and say, well, I went through this and I went through that. That's not what earned me wisdom. That is not where wisdom came. Wisdom came from my time with the Lord. The time I spent listening and loving only him. The time I spent hearing only his voice, talking and allowing him to talk to me. And I don't mean my, even my talking, because like I said, some of you just talk and talk and talk and think everything's fine because you tell him how you think, you tell him how you feel, you tell, and you never listen to how he thinks, how he feels, what he wants, what he desires. I told you. <laughs> 45 years ago, he stopped me from doing that. 45 years ago, he said, <laughs> when I was busy, I mean day and night praying, praying over my family, praying over this and praying over that, day and night over the things I needed. I was just so holy and praying and praying, and I was just so righteous and reading and reading, and I just was so great. And suddenly, he stopped me. And he said, Marion, you are busy about what you want, what you think, and what you need. I already know all that. I don't need you to come to me and tell me that. Here is what I want to use you for. That is what is needed in the kingdom of God. Let me take you. Let me teach you. Let me tell you. Let me do all of this. So come. Come unto me and let me be God in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, in everything about you. And I did. I went. I went. I didn't care what happened to me. I didn't care what it was about. I didn't care who or what for. All I knew is God was calling me to listen to him. That's all I knew. I didn't care about anything else. And I said, God, I wrote down every word he spoke to me. Because I said, God, you know 
when when you're studying something, you write down what people think, what people say, but you're God, and I know it's you, and I want to write down and keep track of everything you say. And I did. And I told you at the end of 10 years, he told me, destroy it. And I'm telling you, do not save the times you have with God to teach others to be like you. This is what he told me. He says, they plagiarize so bad out there. Here's what they will do with what you wrote. He says, they will take it as their own and try to become you and me. And it will kill him. Therefore, you can't keep a record of it. Because if anybody does eventually see that, even after you're gone, and they see that, then they will misunderstand and they will be trying to be you and me, which won't work. Because they can't go back into your mother's womb and become you. Understand that was personal between you and I. This is what he taught me. He said, so you have to get rid of it. Lest someone mistakenly misuses it and hurts themselves with it. Because it is a time that is written in heaven. That is only between you and I. It's not between you and the world. It's not between you all in heaven. It's all written there. It's a record that nobody can change. So I took it and I destroyed it. And I went and wrote and journaled for another 10 years. And he did exactly the same thing. Until I hit a certain year. On that certain year, it became teachings. It became revelation. It became knowledge. It became understanding. It was no longer a personal relationship between him and I that somebody could take to try to make that same relationship happen again. This now is when it began to be what it needed to be to teach you. So you see, make it what you want. Have at it. I've told it to you over and over and over. Have at it. There is a, a, a company right now that has, <laughs> they have think, thought they have played games with me. They thought they've, even now, they think they've got it made. What, whoever has ever stolen one penny off of me, one penny, stole from my ministry, not from me. They stole what I earned. I earned the power to have royalties for my book. And they went and would not even give me a statement of how much I got or a check. And it was supposed to give me every so many months. Now when you talk to them, they say, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, that's ministry money. And if I would have used it to help someone, they are answerable for it, not me. So I don't have to go after them. Somebody says, well, I'll get you a lawyer. No, I don't need it. I don't need a lawyer. I don't need anybody. This is what they will do is answer to God. They don't have to explain to me why they did it this way, why they did it that way. It doesn't matter. They made an agreement with me. They had a contract with me. And they twisted and turned it to their own. Whether the manager did it or whether the owner of the company did, I don't know. I don't care. I have uh, people coming to me wanting to uh, produce a production uh, and produce a movie. They think I'm dumb. They think that I'm going to actually put money into trying to make a movie of my life. They got to be dumb. Because I'm not dumb. Nobody will ever have anything from me without first giving and buying it. Now, 
I may never sell it, but I'm saying I don't give money out to anybody. Oh, I used to because I, I thought, well, this is the way to publish a book. This, no, I don't do that. You want my book? If I write a book and you want my book, buy it. Buy it. I still may never give you the rights to ever change one word. Because if you buy it, I will actually never allow anybody to change one word from God. But you would have to pay me to buy it to publish it. That's the way it works. That's why I won't go into self-publishing anymore. And I've done it. And I, uh, it, it was a nightmare. These people are nothing but scammers. But you see, if they scam somebody who doesn't know God, they may get away with it. But if they scam somebody who does know God and they're using ministry money, they need to think about how important money was for the ministry. It's in the Word. In, you, you, you've got to go look that up of how God sees it. So, and I, as I have said long time ago, if I give out a message that came from God and I say, God said this, this, and this, and somebody takes it, oh, they're threatened. You're threatening me. <clears throat> I have no feeling towards you. How could I threaten you? <laughs> what you do, where you go, who you are has nothing to do with me. Why should I threaten you? As a matter of fact, <laughs> If you came into my life, I'd probably treat you very kindly and very good. Because that's the way I am with everybody. I have no need to be upset with anybody. Even if I knew you're doing the worst things that God has told me you're doing. But he gives me a message to warn you. That's all. That warning is not to destroy you. That warning is not to hurt you. That warning is not to pull you down. That warning is to help lift you up out of where you're at, to convince you of what you need so you can change to be everything that you ever claimed you were. There's a big difference. There's a big difference between condemnation, which is a threat, and a warning that says change, repent. Big difference. You can't take a warning as a threat, especially when it comes right out of the mouth of God. So if you mistake it, that's your problem. Have at it. Because God promises me no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That means no weapon formed against my ministry will prosper. Because you see, I have a ministry. And when you play around with it, you got a problem with God, not me. When you make decisions with it that you're going to do this with God's messages, these are God, this is God. Okay. And you play around with it. You're going to answer the consequences, not me. I don't have to warn you and tell you. You read the Bible. You know that, that what God says about every person that does evil. Tribulation and wrath upon every soul that doeth evil. Did I say that? No. But if you're working evil, not just against me, but at any child of God, you've got problems with God. Because the Bible says that it is better for a millstone to be tied around the person's neck and be dropped into the deepest sea than to hurt one of these little ones who believe in me. And I am surely a child of God, a little one. So do as you will. Do as you want. I'm not out to hurt anybody here. I am out to warn you and to help you. You want to come up and be with God? Repent. Change. Pray that he change you into the image of Jesus Christ. Pray that you could go into the word and see him as he is, that he can enter into your heart and into your mind, that he can become, you can become the man or the woman of God that he wants. That is all that my messages are about. And if anybody says any different, they lie. 
because all of my messages, no matter what, are about his love for you. It is about him wanting the best for you. But you see, through the air, where they say that Satan is God because he doesn't hold you responsible for sin, and that God, Jesus Christ, is Satan because he holds you responsible for sin. You give in, even in the church, to the same doctrine, to the same lie. And you think when somebody warns you to bring you out, you think they're against you. You think that now they have become Satan because they hold you responsible. Don't you see what you're doing? Don't you understand that your heart has to be easily entreated with God? It's got to be in a place where it's a, oh God, did I do this? If I did, please show me. That takes time. That takes wisdom. That takes understanding. Please reveal to me the truth lest I perish. I have never once seen anybody who prayed that way that God did not intervene and lift them up out of it and help them to become what they were supposed to become. Even those of you that have puffed yourself up because you suffered, don't go there. It may, it literally wipes away your suffering. Don't you see? Like like the woman who, who uh, treated a, an elderly man like a baby and was so good to him, but she cursed and swore at every other person that could not do what she did. She hated them. She Oh, you would not believe what she did. She might as well have never helped an elderly person than to come to the place of what she did. Don't you see? She erased everything she did. So what you do if you're not in the will of God, if you're not doing what he wants you to do first, you're erasing the good that you do. Faith without works is dead. You have to have the works that build up your faith. You can't tell people you understand edifying. When you don't know how to lift a person up out of where they're at, you only know how to keep yourself higher than everybody else. I'm going to end with that one.